Thank you for clicking on the channel. Hopefully we learned something new today. I do want to start by saying I am not a professional in any manner. Um, there's probably other ways to do this that will make it work even better. And there's probably proper ways to do it and this probably isn't it. But this is my story. This is how I, I do things. So let's work on it together. Let's figure it out. All right, if you made it this far, hopefully you'll make it another minute into the video. We'll see. So this channel, for the most part, uh, is going to be about going over projects that I've done uh, in the past, maybe upcoming projects as well. I'm going to try to do some tutorials along the way. Once again, I'm going to state there are other tutorials out there that are probably more proper than the way that I do it, uh, maybe even more efficiently. I would like to think in some aspects that I add um, kind of a different way of thinking when it comes to these projects. Um, also, a lot of these projects, when I had to get into this initially, and um, there's still quite a few times when I do a project that I actually, you know, I talk, hop on YouTube, just like you're, you know, just like you're doing here. Hop on YouTube and get on Discord. There's plenty of other chats that help people out. So, um, some things I might not be able to go horribly in, into depth into because I don't understand them myself. But I've spent so much time, you know finding resourcing sources and gathering information to get to this point um, I'm gonna try to take those experiences that I had and kind of condense them just to make it easier for you guys so um, with that being said let's go ahead all right so today uh, I'm gonna try to go over the the bit, real down-to-earth basics of ESP home um, walk you through every step um, Mainly you get set up with a binary sensor and a switch. So uh, let's get to it. All right, like I said, uh, we're gonna start from scratch. Just assuming that you already have Home Assistant installed. Um, hopefully at this point, you're already a little familiar with Home Assistant, but it's not required. Um, so log into Home Assistant. We're gonna go down to settings. We're gonna go to the add-on store. Now in this case, I already have ESP Home installed, but you can go down to add-on. And you're just simply going to search for ESP Home. Now, um, you should just you should just see these three options. Um, you're going to have Dev and Beta. If you're just now, if you're watching this video, then uh, you de you're starting off. You definitely don't want to use either one of these. I still uh, don't use any of these. So you're going to just go to standard ESP Home. You're going to install it. It's going to take a few minutes. Let it do its let it do its thing. Um, I suggest down here where it says show in, si in sidebar, you turn this on. What they'll do is show it over to here, show it over in your left hand pane. All right, so I'm going to click on ESP Home. We're going to go to New Device. Um, a few different ways you can do it. Like I said, there's other tutorials. This, I'm going to go the route that I go. I'm going to hit Continue. Um, let's go ahead and do Test. Uh, let's do test unit. If you notice, when I put a space, it automatically puts the dash in there for you. Hit next. Um, for now, we're going to go ahead and use an uh, Wemos D1 Mini 8266. So go down to pick a specific board, Wemos D1 and Wemos D1 Minis. So we're going to use this guy. We're going to hit next. And we're gonna let's go ahead and I typically hit skip. So now we have the start of this. We can go ahead and hit edit. Now, um, once you get familiar with this, please go ahead and clean out some of this stuff. Um, so in this case, you have it's, it's utilizing Wi-Fi. Uh, it's gonna have an AP feature, and what that means is if the unit uses connect, loses connection from Wi-Fi, it will start broadcasting its own um, AP signal for you to connect to with your phone. Um, I personally, I never use this option. Uh, if they disconnect for some reason, I'll pull the chip out, bring it back in here, and, and go through it. Um, I just find it to be a little bit of a uh, security concern, so I don't, I do not use that. Um, for let's see, I'm gonna drag this off screen for one second. Let's got to change this around to my test. All 
All right. This is my test network. All right. So when you come into ESP Home, you're gonna have a secret folder on the top right. Um, it should already prompt you to add your Wi-Fi uh, SSID and the Wi-Fi password. If not, just duplicate what you see. Come back in here to edit. Now, when you see where it pops up and it says, uh, you know, exclamation mark secrets, you know, Wi-Fi, what that's doing is it's pull that information from the secret file. Um, the benefit to that is mainly when we're doing situations like this, a screen share and whatnot. Um, for over the over the air updates, uh, we're gonna get rid of the password for now. Actually, you know what? We'll uh, we'll stick with the password. Do one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, API will do the same thing. Now I usually get rid of this. I don't want to use an encryption key. I just want to use a password. Oh. Let's see. I'll go through and explain this in a moment. <laughs> All right, now it's happy. You noticed if you, uh, they just did a recent update. If it's in red, it's not happy. If you look over here on the right, you see red in the bar, and it's just not happy. Let's go ahead and fix that, and now we are fine. Um, so captive portal, captive portal kind of falls into place with the AP. Um, it just allows you to have access from uh, web UI. Um, once again, I personally, I don't like that. I pull that off of 99% of my projects. The reason for that is this one of connecting with the AP, with the uh, API will connect to Home Assistant. I want to be able to control all my devices through Home Assistant and inside of Home, Home Assistant, obviously there's separate users and whatnot, different levels that you can provide different access to people. Um, I want to keep all my devices that way as well. If you enable the captive uh, portal and the web server um, portion of it, um, that leaves it you know, uh, available to anybody that's connected to your Wi-Fi um, to be able to log in you know, and whatnot. It just it creates security concerns that I'm not okay with adding into it. All right, so this is kind of a, the cleanest setup that I like to get to. Um, so we have the name right here, ESP name. Now this need, it's important this matches your title, whatever you created initially you set up with. Um, this is your ESP board and type. Now I'll show you uh, in a little bit as far as what logger does, but once we go ahead and we flash our first board, um, loggers is what allows the output um, text and whatnot to see your logs. Um, the API, API is once we flash it to the chip, this is what connects it to Home Assist. Um, OTA, that's over there update. If you remove that, then anytime you want to flash updates to it, you need to manually connect it back to your computer. Once again, um, you know, this is your Wi-Fi information. So typically what I do at this point, start adding components to it. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and save here. I'm going to hit install. Um, now there are a few things you can do. Um, you can connect it directly to your computer. So this is uh, plugging the computer using the ESP Home dashboard. Um, plug into this computer. I'm going to give this a try. I've actually, yep, I'm not even. I'm not even going to go that route. So what I've typically do for the first thing is I come down to manual download, legacy. It's going to go through here. It's going to compile this. Um, now, there are several different programs out there that you can utilize. Um, I will say, if you are just now getting into this and you have any experience with any of this, um, something that you're going to need, and you can go ahead and Google this. And I mean, there are you know quite a few different ones out there. Um, but most likely, you're going to need to install a driver that will allow your computer to communicate with your ESP chip. So you can go ahead and look, you know, look this up, Google it, and install that. Um, I use ESP Home Flasher. 
I've been using this for years now. So if we look, it compiled the program successfully. I come in here, I'm gonna hit browse, go to my download folder, and there's my test bin. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and plug in the chip. All right, now that, uh, we're back at this. So me personally, I try to stick to a few chips. Now ESP Home is only gonna work on ESP um, A266 and ESP32. I mean, there's a whole slew of different microcontrollers out there. ESP Home will only work on those. Um, and there's a whole crap load of variety. Um, I personally, for a lot of my projects, I use the Wemos D1 Mini in both uh, A266 chip and 32. So uh, here, here I have my cable. Um, keep in mind, once I plug in the computer, I only have a short period to actually go ahead and find the port and start flashing it. Um, in some cases, if you have an issue, you're gonna hold down, hold down the reset button on the side. As you plug it into your computer, you should hear a happy beep. See, there we go, you should have heard that. I'm gonna hit this refresh up here, come down, find my COM port, and I'm gonna hit flash. Shouldn't take too long here. You just my luck to have a bad chip, right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and leave this connected. So of course, this will go through and gives, a, gives us some nice information. It's telling us what networks it found. Um, if you end up having issues as well, um, it's gonna pop up here. Um, I will say if you, know, you start seeing issues where it says brown out, that's gonna be a power issue. You're not providing enough power to the chip and whatnot. So if you are having issues, th this is beneficial. Uh, to be able to read the logs. All right, so I'm gonna hit close, exit out of this real quick. And if you notice, this went from being offline to online. So I can go ahead and hit logs. And there's really nothing going on at the moment. We don't have anything set up, so we're not gonna see anything. Um, but if we disable logger, it's, it's, it's gonna disable that, that readout. All right, so I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to search ESP home binary sensor GPOI GPIO and this is what I personally like about ESP home is it's usually your first option here they give you some really nice setups here so first off I'm going to go ahead and copy this right off the bat copy and we're going to throw this down here all right, we're going to come back up here, and we're just going to look at the configuration of variables. So we have the pin, the name, the ID, and then right here, if you're looking, up a button without a do. So if you're 99% of the time, you're going to want to use this. So we're going to go ahead and just you know replace that existing one. Come back here. We'll leave that alone for a moment. So as far as the name, we're gonna do test sensor. Um, I do recommend, and honestly, in a lot of cases, this guy will actually be up here. Um, I would suggest either, well, I suggest doing a name and an ID. We'll get to that in a moment. So when it comes to the name, you can have the name formatted any way you want. Um, the name is what's going to present itself inside a home assistant. If I remove the name, this sensor is going to be internal. It will not be exposed to home assistant. Home assistant. For the ID, it, it has to be lowercase. You can't have any special characters. You can't have any spaces. Um, we're going to go ahead and just starting off, we're going to use pin B1. Um, for the input, what the input is telling it is that we're going to use this as an input. So this is a binary sensor. Um, and then benefit to the Wheatmills D1 Minis is it already has a resistor on the board that's, that's going to either pull it up or, or pull it down. 
Um, so we're telling it that it is true. It does have a pull up. Um, and what that does is, is it keeps it from kind of bouncing back and forth. Um, it just makes it more stable. So uh, and that's going to be true. So I mean, it's copy and paste. Now, uh, say I want another sensor here. Um, let's go to, you know what? What I'm going to do is I want to make this simple as possible. Let's be one second. All right, um, went ahead and modified this a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with D1 as a binary sensor. And we're going to go ahead and make B2, or sorry, D2, a binary sensor as well. Now, two things here is if I take and I copy binary sensor, again, it's going to throw an error. Reason for that is the binary sensor is setting the class. So you're going to have that one time. So anything below this is going to be a binary sensor. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to see if I can put switch. Yep, so I'm going to put switch. So if I took this and I brought it down here, it is now a switch. All right. Um, the reason it's throwing an error here as well is you can't have two IDs with the same one. Uh, so let's go ahead and put sensor B. Oh, come up here, sensor A. So we're gonna utilize D1 and D2 for the name. Let's do do button. This one, let's do touch. All right, I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna go ahead and hit install. Now we can do it wirelessly since we're already connected to it. Why that is doing that is I made up a little bit of some little ends here. Um, she's a little, little connection pigtails. So see D1, give me our button. D2 will be our test. And it looks like we are having an issue. Showing it online. Let's try doing an install one more time. You know what? See, this is uh, part of the issue. I'm gonna get rid of the uh, OTA password there. I'm gonna go ahead and do a manual download again. Sorry about that. All right. So what I what I have here is like I have a put I have a button. Now the way it works for most for well all the binary sensors. When you take the pin that you assigned it to, in this case, D1 and D2, when you take that pin and you, you connect it to ground, it's going to draw that pin down. All right, so once again, I'm going to open up um, my ESP flasher. I'm going to select that new bin. I'm going to try to flash. It's going to see unexpected failure. Reason for that is it's been on for a while. So I need to unplug it, hold down reset. Plug it back in, re reset the port here, and I'm going to hit flash. So yes, every binary sensor, the way it's going to read um, read the state changes is by grounding it out to ground. So I just have a standard push button here, and it is simply connected to from one side. It's connected to D1. The other side is connected to ground. Now, the second one I have is just capacitive touch right here. Um, same thing is on, on here, it has, it's labeled ground, um, well, high slash low, and then VCC. Um, so in this case, I have you know, the ground going to the ground, the high low pin. So this is, in this case, your binary pin is going to D2. And then I have uh, the voltage coming out of here and feeding the capacitive touch. So if you notice, when I touch it, 
it lights up. This is, uh, you know, the benefits of the world of, of these little devices. I mean, even these capacitive touch, um, I mean, they're less than a few bucks. All right, so you noticed in the meantime of all of this, down here we have a new notification. We're gonna have a new device discovered. Now, in this case, we get to go through all this. This is my dev one. So here, discover test unit. We're gonna hit config, submit. Normally, it shouldn't take this long. I'm not sure if, uh, just because all these other devices are not discovered. No, we're going to do it the old fashioned way. So you can come up here, copy the name, settings, device and services, add integration, PSP home. Um, Let's go ahead and hit no, just so I can show you this. Copy, or sorry, paste the name, and then add dot local. All right, it's able to figure it out. It's had it connected to the wrong network. So I'm gonna hit add integration. Let an ESP home. We're gonna do this test unit dot local. Uh, the API password that we had in there was one, two, three, four, five, six. Do something stronger that works for this purpose. All right, so go ahead and click in there. Now we see two uh, two entities that are being exposed to Home Assistant. So we have a button and we have touch. Hit the button, goes on and off. Hit the touch, goes on and off. Now if you notice for the button, which is currently on, you hit it and it goes off. So what we need to do is we want to revert that state. So we're going to go back to ESP Home. We're going to test unit. And what I've added right here is inverted true. Now, in this case, I have it commented out, so it's not seeing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put that, put that in there. Now, I personally like to keep this for all of mine. So in this case, you know, it's not needed. So I'm just going to do false for the touch one. Um, and then also you have a filter. And what the filter is, is say you're using a capacitive touch and you have it to turn on a light. The problem is when somebody goes to touch it, they might nick it a few times. So I want to set this to where when I hit it, say it stays on for, um, you know, half a millisecond. So let me, uh, or sorry, half a second. Go ahead and get rid of this. In this case, though, delay on is, is how much time it takes for it to come on. So we're going to do a delay off. And let's do, let's do uh, one second just for, you know, visual here. Hit install. So once, you know, once we, uh, we flashed the first time, now we're doing over-the-air updates. So doing it wirelessly. All right, so go back to settings, device and services, test unit, and wait for them to become available again. And when the button pops up this time, it should show it shows off. There we go. So now if you notice, I hit the button, goes on, off. Now, now watch how long it takes for it to actually turn off. So, it, so for example here, because I put it on the wrong one, see how that goes on and off really, really quick. So let's come back to SP Home, go to Test Unit. We're gonna move this filter down to the touch. Go ahead and flash this again. All right, we'll hang out here waiting for it to come back up.
Do do do. At some point, I'll get better into the magic of the video. I'll pause it for you. All right. So now for the button, it goes on and off as quick as we can hit it. For the touch, if you notice though, I'm hitting it really, really quick and it's staying on. So that's because we added a one second. That way it, it prevents somebody from double tapping it and triggering it multiple times. All right, so hopefully at this point you understand that basis. Right now I just have two windows. I'm going back and forth just for ease here. Um, all right, so now what I want to do is let's create a switch. I want to keep the, the capacitive touch. Uh, let's get rid of the button for now. So I'm going to, because I want, right now, I would suggest staying away from pin three and four. Uh, so right now you have pins uh, D1, D2, D5, D6, and D7 available to use. Uh, if you know what you're doing, more advanced, you can use the other pins. But for now, you're going to stay away from them. Uh, but I only have pigtails connected to two pins. So I'm going to steal the one from D1. And let's make it a switch. Um, in this case, the for the input, we're going to make this false. And you make that false. Um, obviously, this is no longer a binary sensor. You do not want it to pull it one way or the other. Let's go ahead and we need to add input. I'm sorry, output. All right. So now what we do is, is we're changing this to an output because we're going to output 3.3 volts on the pin. Um, all right, so let me get rid of this. Let me unplug this guy. And I have an LED. Now for this, it's it's fairly safe. If you notice, it's lit up right now because right now there is some voltage, is go voltage going through. It still says a binary sensor until I run this. Yep. Go ahead and fix that real quick. Power of you. All right. Went ahead and fixed it. All right. So right now it still says a binary sensor, so you're going to get some some power through it, which is why it's lit up. Um, same thing is binary sensor. Um, the ground on the LED is connected to the ground. Uh, the positive is connected to the pin. So we're going to go ahead and flash this. Do do do. And once it reboots, you should notice it should turn off. We might have to reverse the state. Yep. Let's go ahead and reverse it. Right now it's on. Um, yep, inverted true. See, I did not change that. False. So. You need to know that, you know, anyway. So same thing with the binary sensor, you can reverse the natural state of it. We're uploading it. Once it finishes, it should. There we go. All right. If this is actually, so we still have this guy. Let's go over to here. So if you notice now, see now this button is no longer here. We can click on it. Um, after a little while, it gives us an option to delete it. So now if we come over to here, uh, still name button, turn it on, and the light turns on. Now, I mean, there's a whole you know crap load of different uses for this. Um, you know, you know, it, it's only I'll put in 3.3 volts. It is very minimal um, amperage wise, very very minimal. Um, so as far as using, you know, you're going to want to use like a, a relay dev board, um, but that's how you would, you would use the uh, the output as a trigger. Um, so I also have a little Pico buzzer here, a little three volt Pico buzzer. Uh, yep, you might want to turn your volume down. Well, so and you actually using an output, you can actually get really creative with these. And get them to play tunes. That might be uh, something I do later down the road. Um, 
All right, so there's one last thing I want to do in this video. I feel like it's already dragged down long enough. Plug the light back in. We come back in here, and what we're going to do is I want this to where when we hit the button, or when we hit the touchpad, I want it to turn the light on. So let's see if I get this correct. So we're going to do on, on state on. Oh, no, you know, it's, it's going to be on press. On press. Um, then. Turn. Switch. Oh, I'm sorry. Switch. Turn. On. And we need to put the ID of the switch. All right. And we're going to go ahead and indent it because we're going to have a few here. So we're going to turn that on. That's a pain. We're going to want it to turn off. Actually, yep, you know, we'll do this. So we can do see, we're going to delay and we're going to put five seconds. Um, so, what this will do is on press, it will turn it on. After five second delay, it will turn it off. Now, we're going to go and copy the same thing and we're going to do on release. And I'm going to get rid of this portion of it. All right. Everything looks good. I don't see any red. Just go ahead and flash it. And uh, there's a whole slew of different con conditions that you can add to that. Um, you can even pull a state from certain states from inside a home assistant where if a door, you know, this this only works if a door is open. You can add conditions, um, a whole slew of that. We'll get into that later on down the road. All right, so if it's set up, when I hit this, that should turn on. So now keep in mind, the reason when I let go, it stays on as long as it does. <laughs> it's getting a little tripped up here because I have... When this turns on, it turns on, it turns off five seconds later. So let's clean this up just a little bit. So I just want to show you this feature. Let's get rid of that. And for the delayed off, let's change this to 500 milliseconds, which is typically what, what I would want. All right, let's let that flash. All right. What did I, I did something wrong here. See, even I tend to screw up. Oh, switched up. Okay, I just didn't wait for it to load. So you hit it, stays on for half a second. Now, let's go ahead and do one last thing here. Let's get rid, rid, or you know what, let's take this down to 50 milliseconds. Let's do this, do it one more time. Yep, that was my fault initially. The, auto, the automations on the chip, they don't take over until the chip has fully boot up. I have to reconnect it. It's power cycled, so it reconnects the internet. We're going to time out anyway. Uh, see if we can figure out what's happening to the logs here. It doesn't seem to want to connect. Oh. Here while connecting to the network. All right. Not entirely sure why, but I do promise to keep this channel with all the hiccups and the crap that actually comes with this. Um, do you personally feel there's too many times out there where 
people make a project seem way easier than it is, and you don't get to go through all these faults. Um, this is somewhat average. Let's see if it'll actually run. Now, I do expect you, uh, you guys to have less issues than me. Um, network's a little complicated on top of that. I did have this chip initially. We're going to do this manually. I did have this chip initially connected to a different VLAN. Um, so it is very possible at this point. It's just internally the D, you know, DHCP is just having a hard time finding this. So I'm going to do this manually. Go ahead and select that file again. Flash it. So I got lucky that time when I have to unplug it and plug it back in. Do apologize for the length of this video now at this point. All right. If it actually connects. All right. In the meantime of that, it should go much quicker. If you notice, since I took it down to, yep, it's finally connected. So I took it down to 50 milliseconds. And I um, at this point, there's no delay on, no delay off. So if you notice, make it on as quick as you want. If you look at the screen here, um, I just realized this is kind of putting, can't really see the touch portion. There we go. So, as you notice, the sensor and the switch is turning on. Now, like I said, there's a whole different set of uh, conditions and automations and stuff. And to be honest, I mean, you can go, we can go away from way, <laughs> way down the rabbit hole there. Um, so that's down the road. That's gonna be for another video. Um, but this is the main setup. Where I started was was simply with this. Um, you know, I personally, if it's uh, if you're controlling a relay and you need it to come on and off real quick, I suggest doing the automation itself on the chip. Um, I try to do as much automation as I can on the chip. Um, now, don't get me wrong. As far as connecting these two together, we could have completely. You know what? I will show you that. Let's. Um, yeah, watch. It's not going to connect. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do it manually. All right. So I'm gonna get get rid of this. I'm gonna go ahead and see if that will wirelessly wirelessly do it. I'm gonna go and set up an automation. Start with an empty automation, add trigger. We're gonna go to state. And we're gonna do touch, right? We do touch. Touch goes from off to on action do call service switch turn on and button all right and you need to rename that oh, actually here uh, we'll do light on All right, um, let's go to duplicate. We're going to do from on to off. This is going to be switch turn off button. Save, light off. All right, so let's come back over and see if this, yep, it connected. So just to show you here, once again, and you can watch through the logs, um, there's no automation on the chip. So this is successfully flashed, 
I'm gonna open this up here. There's no automation. This is strictly going through Home Assistant. So I hit the button, it's going to the ESP uh, to 8266, send it to, to Home Assistant. Home Assistant is coming back and saying, okay, the button was pressed. I'm gonna send a signal to turn the light on. So the automation is done strictly through Home Assistant. This is the you know the benefit of being local, benefit of using these devices. Um, I mean, this whole setup in general. Um, I mean, look how look how fairly damn quick that is. Um, I mean, it's almost you know unnoticeably. I mean, there's no there's no difference. You know, extremely extremely quick. So, you know, it's kind of the sky's the limit. Um, so within Home Assistant itself, I can add a condition to where this will only work if if I'm home. Um, you know, or this will only work if you know if something else is is happening. So sky's the limit. Um, I appreciate you watching. Maybe you made it through all the way. I'm not sure. Do me a favor. Still very, very new. And I understand the equipment I'm using is very archaic at the moment as far as recording. Uh, and I got a crap intro. Um, let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Um, even if they're negative, you know, go ahead and leave a comment. I appreciate it.